Okay, so I'd like to start by uh, thanking the organizers, Shakuntala, Kavita, and Tridip for putting this uh, two-day meeting together, uh, being so resourceful in the face of uh, yeah all possible glitches that could arise, uh, you know, in, in such a meeting. Uh, and then um, I'd like to, of course, thank ICTS for their you know technical support. Uh, this is not the first online meeting I've attended uh, from them. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it, everything works really smoothly. It's, it's really great. Um, the speakers of all the sessions, uh, it's, it's your, the talks have been very informative, uh, really very nice. Uh, and, uh, and the chairs of all the sessions, you, you have a really tough task cut out for you uh, with uh, these time limits and so on. And last, but of course, not the least at all, most importantly, Deepak and Mustansir for being, uh, you know, who you are for, being the inspiration and the reason for this for this meeting, and uh, you could say you're really uh, very important for the statistical physics community from from the equator up to the poles, if you count me as a representative of the poles uh, just now. Uh, and I um, I wish you many many uh, productive and happy years, inspiring your colleagues as you've been doing, and and I wish for myself that I hope I'll be able to see you in in person sometime soon. Uh, as also see many of you in the audience, it's been uh, just too many years. Okay, so this uh, topic of these chemical reaction networks uh, was something uh, Eric, Eric Smith is my collaborator. Uh, he used to be at the Santa Fe Institute, but now spends some time in Japan as well and some time in the US. And uh, we learned about this, uh, you know, in some meeting uh, that we attended and we were uh, sort of uh, very surprised. It's a sort of uh, very rich mathematical literature there which doesn't seem to be so well known in the, in the physics community. So um, I thought maybe it would be interesting for you too. So what are these, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, chemical reaction networks. So they are, uh, you know, you can depict them in this way. Clearly they appear in chemistry and in biology. Um, uh, so, so here, for example, is a very standard uh, network from biology. You have enzyme kinetics, you know, so there is a E an enzyme, an S, a substrate that can uh, sort of amalgamate to an enzyme substrate complex, or it can dissociate back, or it can dissociate to an enzyme in a product, or this E and S can enter the system, they can leave the system, and so on. So, of course, you can have, you know, very complicated such networks in biology or chemistry, but it's not only there that these things appear, you also have, um, uh, say ecology, where you know you have these prey predator kind of equations, Lotka Volterra, that you can depict in this way, or, or you can uh, you also have uh, in uh, epidemiology. You know we've uh, seen too much of that uh, in the last two years with these SIRS kind of models and so on. And uh, of course in physics, uh, you have the zero range process, which can also be written this way. We heard about the zero range process uh, this morning in Nostanzer's talk, also. So, you know, everything that sits on a site can be sort of depicted as this S with, you know, subscript site number. And then there is some way that um, particles can move from one site to another and so on. Okay, so, uh, you, you know, so they are typical, uh, you know, the prototypical non-equilibrium processes. Uh, and then you could ask, you know, um, and, and then you can model them the way that you normally model these non-equilibrium processes. You, you can model them deterministically or you can model them... Uh, uh, stochastically via master equations and so on. And then you could ask, is there something that you can say about these, you know, uh, solutions of these deterministic rate equations or, 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 you know, or the steady states of these master equations? Can you say something? And, you know, a priori, you might have thought, no, you can't, because I you know we don't know any general principles which govern any typical non-equilibrium system. However, uh, in this particular uh, case, it turns out actually that uh, you can, if these chemical reaction networks are of a certain type, so that's what's actually quite well known in the maths literature, but not so much in the physics community. And this property, it's a network property called deficiency. Deficiency is this, uh, can be a, it's, a, it's a number which is, you know, can be zero or it could be positive. And it's something that you can just look at the network and figure out what it is. And that's what we'll do in the rest of the talk. But uh, this, uh, this, if it's zero, then it predicts something. It predicts that those rate equations within some constraints have uh, you know, fixed points, unique fixed points. It predicts also that if you model that same equation stochastically by a master equation, then it's going to have um, you know, factorized steady states. So it's actually uh, very interesting. 
And it would be very interesting to make some connection with the physics literature, which is why I picked this topic. Uh, the, you know, we, uh, Eric and I also, we did some work on it and there were some references in the first slide, but I won't really talk about that work right till right till the end and more about the sort of things that led us to get interested in this, okay? So namely this deficiency. So I'll try now to just explain what this property is. Okay, so we need to get into a little bit of notation, but many, much of it is quite standard. So here we have our old network. And uh, before we understand what deficiency is, we have to define a few different things. One is just the species. So, you know, in this network, there are four species. There is an E, there is an S, and then they come together in this, but they are still the species E and S. This E, S, which is this complex, can be also thought of as a species. And then there is a P, the product, which is a species. There are four species in this network. And there are six complexes. So everything that sits on one or the other side of the arrow is a complex. Okay, and, uh, and then when you, in, when you look at this network, you also see another thing. Uh, you, you can see, for example, if you think, uh, you know, how many connected components there are in this. So in this case, there are two, the thing on top there and the thing here, okay? Uh, I hope you're able to see my, uh, this little cursor. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, great. Okay, so, so, so this, this, net, this number of connected components is called linkage class, okay? So that's two here. And then within a linkage class, you can also talk about whether it's weakly reversible or reversible. So that's a bit confusing because it has nothing to do with detailed balance at all. In the, in the mathematics literature, it's just used to understand, you know, if there is every, if there's a way into every complex and there's a way out of every complex, that's, that's basically it. So if it's reversible, then there's a way in and out directly, like in this network, or maybe like in the zero range process, you know, you could go from here to here and here to here, and then there back again, that would be weakly reversible. Okay, and then these rate constants, which I've just you know, written here as numbers here, actually, so the most generic way that these things are defined, and we saw some examples also yesterday, is mass action kinetics. So that would appear uh, in the way that you would imagine. For example, I was deterministically modeling this, this network. Then, of course, I would write some equation for the evolution of the concentration. So this thing is like the concentration of S. There would be another equation for the concentration of E and P and so on, and ES, and they would be coupled. And the mass action rates is just telling you, okay, it's K1 bar times the amount of E and the amount of S there is, uh, is the rate at which I lose an S and so on and so forth. So I just keep track of those things, which at first I can do also uh, in, the, in, the, in the master equation. Okay, so, and one last thing that we need is that uh, to, to, to define this deficiency is that, you know, if I just depict these, you know, I remember I said there were these four species. So if I just depict them by these column vectors, you know, so E, uh, and I choose some ordering for them. So E has a one on top, the S has a one there, E, S, et cetera. Then these reactions are very nicely sort of uh, depicted by these column vectors. So you see that this reaction has a minus one and a minus one because there's a minus one of an E and a minus one of an S and an E, S plus one. Okay, so I don't need to write back reaction because it's just minus of this vector. So there are four such, and there are these four vectors are linearly independent of each other. So the span of these reaction vectors is called dimension of stoichiometric subspace, okay? Bit of a mouthful, but it's a simple thing. And in this case, it's four. Okay, so these are the numbers you need to remember. The number of complexes, the number of linkage classes, the dimension of the stoichiometric subspace. And then you construct this quantity called the deficiency, which is the number of complexes minus the number of linkage classes minus this S. And you see that this particular network, again, that's why I chose it, has a deficiency of zero. Um, so this deficiency one can show can be zero or it can be positive. Uh, and it's, you see that it's just a network quantity. So given any network, I could easily write an algorithm and find out what it is, okay? However, it has very, very important implications for, for, for the dynamics you know, uh, or late time dynamics of this network. So there was this result known from the sort of chemical reaction mathematician, uh, sort of queuing theory uh, from, from long back. Uh, which was that if, uh, if a CRN is weakly reversible, then if I have mass action kinetics, these rate equations will have precisely one fixed point within one compatibility class. Uh, I mean, compatibility class is only if I have some sort of uh, conserved quantity, then for some one value of that conserved quantity. And, you know, so the interest in this sort of field sort of uh, revived with this, this result, this theorem of Anderson, Krasion, and Kurtz, 2010, which showed that if you, if all the conditions of that density deficiency zero theorem were obeyed by the CRN, 
and I just choose to model it stochastically, then the steady state is going to be product from stationary distribution. Okay, so, so it's a very, very interesting result. And of course has direct implications for, you know, so the zero range process uh, where of course it's known. Uh, so this was the mass action rates in the zero range uh, process. I think you have two more minutes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's really a race against time here. <laughs> yes. So in this uh, zero range process, of course, the, these results are known. Many of you uh, know it much better than I do. In fact, you know it even for other kinds of mass, I mean, not necessarily mass action rates, but, but there you have this, um, uh, and um, uh, so, so there you know that you have these, uh, these factorized uh, form of the steady state. But you know, with this deficiency zero, you can also see, uh, and I guess that's of course also known in the physics literature, that you can have different kinds of boundary conditions. You can have in and out through the boundaries. You can have arbitrary in and out of these things inside. If I don't change the deficiency, it's all going to be factorized steady states. I don't even have to solve the problem to, to know that that's what the steady state's going to be. And typically also for this, this enzyme network, et cetera. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a feeling for like why, you know, so the mathematics behind why such a thing happens. And for that, we just need one, you know, a few, a few, a few more things, which are again, very simple. And this might make some connection with the talk uh, this morning also, which, which dealt with these, uh, yeah, uh, which with when you can have uh, sort of simpler kind of steady states, et cetera. So, uh, so this one, so this, there's an A matrix. So, so whenever I have this reaction network, I have an A matrix where I have columns, which I can label by complexes. And then these, these, these uh, column sums add up to zero. It's just, you know, what rate at which I left that complex. Okay, so the zero is a complex, but zero is not a species, remember. And then I have, you know, this other Y matrix, which keeps track because, you know, there are complexes, there are species. This Y keeps track of how the species fit into the complex. So the number of columns are the number of complexes and the number of rows are the species. So for example, this first row here is the E species. You see, there is no E in the complex zero. There is one E in the complex E. There is no E in the complex S and so on. So, okay, so that's what it is. And one column vector, which keeps track of the, the way in which these mass action rates appear. And then one can show, for example, that the first equation, I mean, the first, the equation for the first moment is just as simple as this. This Y matrix times the A matrix times this average. Uh, so a column vector where now I replace everything by its average value, okay? Average over either the instantaneous probability distribution or the steady state, if that's what I'm interested in. And in the steady state, of course, I don't want anything changing in time, so this is zero. And now you can see that there can be two ways that that thing can be zero. Either A acting on this thing completely nullifies it, okay? So in then case, of course, Y acting on something zero will give you zero. Or A doesn't nullify it and sends something through, but then Y acting on that will make it zero, okay? And that is exactly the, def the, the difference between deficiency zero and non-zero. And deficiency zero networks are those but it's enough to know this A, A matrix. So, so basically in your problem, if you identify complexes and then there is some balancing for these complexes, then uh, you know, it's, it's in fact even called complex balancing. So I'm wondering if there is any connection to the talk this morning uh, where there was some other you know, different kinds of balancings uh, you know, so mentioned. Okay, so maybe we, we can discuss that afterwards. So in the, in, the, in the work that I did with Eric, we also found actually that you know, any moment, you can write actually equation for any moment uh, or, or collections of moments or whatever in terms of these Y and A matrices. Uh, it looks uh, you know, sort of complicated, but uh, basically you can show that if for a deficiency zero network, just satisfying this satisfies the entire moment hierarchy basically, okay? And for a deficiency non-zero network, no, it doesn't. And uh, basically, you know, so we were interested in what you can say about deficiency, non-zero networks or not. Uh, and in the end, you know, we saw some regularities that you can, you know, see because of these moment equations. But I have to say, we didn't get so far with that. Okay, so in some simple cases, we could kind of uh, solve it. Uh, uh, sometimes you can do some kind of asymptotic analysis, but there's a lot of work there too, I think. But even work, I think here, uh, just connecting it to the physics literature for factorized steady states. So in the, in, you know, the first, the, in the, so for example, you know, so that the first two points there are the, the queuing theory. So we, that is, I think, similar to this deficiency. Uh, so what they call partial balance there, I think is the same as this deficiency zero condition. 
But you know, we talked of other kinds of balance, uh, which may or may not be related, I don't know. And then there is this paper by Evans, Majumdar, and Zia, uh, who talk of a certain chipping condition that you need in order to reach factorized steady states. Is it the same or is it the not? Is it not? I think, I mean, if you have um, uh, continuous time and discrete masses, it's the same, but you know, I, I'm not sure. And then this condition even works for, uh, sorry, if you have discrete masses and continuous time, that is the same, but here they also have continuous masses and discrete time, et cetera. Then, you know, so they have these pair factorized steady states, which is, uh, you know, can, can that be thought of in some way in the CRN language? And finally, there's a recent paper, which also I found very interesting. I, uh, sorry, uh, which I don't know if there's any such thing in the physics literature at all. And that is when can you have product form all through? So, you know, let's say the steady state was one and I gave you an initial condition was one. Uh, you know, is there a condition that sort of ensures that you can have a product form all through? And, you know, there are these mathematicians uh, in this last reference here who found actually that there is actually such a condition, which is, which I found very interesting too. Okay, so with that, I think I'll stop. Thank you very much. Thank you for this interesting talk. Uh, we have two raised hands, one from Professor Satya Majumdar and one from Professor Sanjeev. So we can have a quick question and answer session yes. since we are running out of time. So Professor Satya Majumdar, you can ask. Hi, Supriya. That was that was wonderful. I mean, this. Uh, no, I didn't know about this zero deficiency theorem. So I have just one question. It is this. I mean, this this theorem. I mean, does it have anything to? I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with the topology of the underlying uh, graph, right? Or the lattice on which you are defining your. Uh, no, limits, that's right? the amazing thing. Because as long as I just write it in that CRN language, I, I write it with those connections. That's all that you need, basically. Right. Right. Right, so it is completely independent of topology. That's, that's exactly. So the zero range process, as you know, I mean, it was your paper. Yeah. I mean, you showed it. It's it's one D or it's some arbitrary network or something. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. Yeah, I see. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Professor Sanjeev, uh, you can also. Ask. It's a wonderful talk, to Supriya. Uh, Thanks, okay, maybe you have mentioned it. I missed it, but uh, this what is the this deficiency actually physically mean? Is there a uh, I mean, can I see something like physically what does it mean or? Yeah, so it's a dimension of a, a sort of space, you know, which is related to the kernel and images of these two matrices Y and E. Mm -hmm. uh, that's but why it's, you know, it's necessarily either zero or it's positive. So you okay. can define it in terms of those dimensions of, you know, so there were these two matrices I introduced Y and E. So the dimension of the sort of image of A and the kernel of Y. Uh, uh, so, so the intersection of the set of those two, but uh, more uh, more physical than that, I, I don't know. I, I uh, uh, yeah. So, 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 so basically, it's some kind of a dimension of some subspace of this network. Okay. Okay. Thank you for this interesting talk, uh, Professor.